Do you think that figuring out a color scheme is easy task? Such an absurd question. In this video, we're gonna discuss about colors and more precisely, colors in design system. It's quite hard to craft a nice color palette that will supplement your design system. And I have to say, when I first started working with design systems like years ago, I was terrified. I thought, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm so lost. And after years of trial and error, I came up with a plugin that does the heavy lifting. It's super simple to use. I will show you how I would use it in my design system. And I am certainly sure that it will shave hours, if not days or weeks of your hard work. Before we open Figma and explore the plugin, let's check how big players are doing design systems. So over here, I have material design. This is a design system from Google and I already have their color page opened. And here you can see how they handle color scale. So they have 10 values and then they pick their primary one. And this is the secondary one, but let's focus on this row. So they picked uh, this shade of purple to be the primary and then they made the split on left and right, darker and lighter. For the naming system, they used numbers, which I believe is the best way to go about it. Let's move on to Atlassian. So <laughs> I have to say, even though I really dislike using their products, their design system is extremely mature and super nicely documented. So if we scroll on the top, you can see their secondary and primary over here palette. And if we scroll a bit down, for example, this red one, this would be their main color in reds and then they have uh, seven one two three four seven different steps darker and lighter for the naming system they also utilize numbers i would assume this r means red um, but yeah maybe a little bit too too brave to put r as in red because what if it changes to let's say orangey then this R might be a little bit hard to change along the way. But moving on to Shopify Polaris, it's their design system. And right now it's a little bit all over the place, but they say it's working progress. So we don't see clear scale over here. It's just like a lot of tokens smashed around, but let's check over here what they have. For example, this blue, it has a semantic name, P as in primary, and then functionality of that color. It's used for focused states. And here you have a description for use in the focus ring on interactive elements. That's very handy and it helps developers and new designers and all designers who maybe don't remember all colors by heart. This is impossible to remember at all times. But for example, then you're a little bit, how would I say, in a little cage if you say this is only for focusing, what if you have some custom element that uses some different color, then you need to reuse some other token, for example, be interactive and the functionality of that color is still for focusing. So I think it might add a little bit of friction and pain points in figuring out what to use when, but anyway, it's also a good naming system. Okay, now we know how big players are handling colors. So let's open Figma and see how to do that in a few minutes, five minutes, less. I guarantee it's less. Yay, finally the fun part. So let's get cracking. First you wanna do is press R, click on canvas, and there you go, you created a rectangle. And then you select your color, let's say, I don't know, red. And now, while this frame is selected, just press uh, command and forward slash and then open color scale. And now this little widget will offer you some options. So how many steps you want to have? Let's say, um, let's do nine because 
this one will also count so all in total 10 and this option over here is for dark theme so what would be the minimal opacity for dark mode and 10 percent is I guess uh, good for everybody so I would recommend leaving that but you can also increase so the lightest color will be 80 percent or 30 percent but let, let's do 10. Make scale and there you have it it's here just like that and then you can rename your colors and now let's create actual styles so I'm gonna rename those let's put primary and then a little space and we can do something like number over here we can add zero or you just manually name them however you want rename now let's create styles and as you can see here we already have our styles that's cool and you can just repeat the process for everything of course because you have dark theme over here you might want to do something like let's say let's rename you can put light forward slash uh, and then primary and then a number let's add zero over here let's rename those and then we will run styler again generate styles and there you have it why with forward slash well because if you click anywhere on canvas you can click on this little carrot and then you can see all the styles for light and of course you can proceed with dark or even some third option you have that's it thank you for watching it was a pleasure creating this plugin and sharing with you i hope a lot of you will try it, use it and tell me what you think. I am very open to feedback and suggestions. Uh, use Figma comments on the plugin page to, to say if something is wrong or just send me email. I will definitely uh, check everything you send my way. Then if you are into podcasts, please head to Design Party Podcast. Uh, it's in description below, the link to the podcast. I have two of my good friends joining me uh, every two weeks to discuss some topic around design. And as a final thought, I want to give you a little update about my future plans. I am planning to create and release a series of videos, a course around certain topics in Figma and product design. It's going to be separated in several modules. If you're interested in purchasing a course and then having it forever. Follow me on Twitter because I will post updates there. That's all. Have a good one and see you next time.